Hello everyone, so I'm here today to do another video and this is going to be part two of my series of reading the favorite books of my favorite booktubers kind of thing. Um, now this is going to be a little bit less um, positive than uh, my last video on this because I had a lot of um, ideas in common with Lauren. Uh, this episode is going to be about Katie Books, who is one of my favorite booktubers, but we have different tastes in books, so it's a little bit more of a hit and miss. He had eight books in his favorites of the year, and I have read four and a half. Um, so the first one in his list was Heaven by Bieko Kawakami. I read this a long time ago, way before it was in any of these uh, international booker lists. And I, I had an arc from uh, from Ned Gully and I read it then. And I thought it was okay. I thought it was enjoyable at the moment, but it didn't stay with me. I thought um, it was a little bit pretentious, not in a bad way, but it was just not my kind of pretentious book kind of thing. So... Yeah, that, that I'm okay with. Um, he also had the new name, uh, Septology, by John Fosse in his list. Uh, and I have a full review of the Septology, so all, the, all three books. So I will link it down below. But uh, for me, this was just very tedious to go through. I understand why people like it, because it has an innovation to it. But it, it, it's the kind of innovation that does nothing for me. Um, it was just about this man being boring honestly like going out and drinking and thinking out his art and stuff like that i don't particularly like books about artists and i don't particularly like books about men being men and i yeah i just found it very tedious um also i found that the whole point of having like this doppelganger kind of person had no point um i thought there was going to be some kind of revelation or some kind of um i don't know some kind of thing explaining why this was happening or like at least justifying why this was important to explore the topic but it just felt like the the author had this idea like oh it would, wouldn't it be funny if two characters in the book had the same name and did the same things and they just had different lives um and then he wrote about it and i just i just felt like there was kind of no point <laughs> in the book so um yeah that one was also not the best for me then the next one is one that i think we agree on <laughs> finally and that's trickle walker by alan garner i also have a full review for that one um this is a fantasy book and it's a trip and i'm not sure i knew what was going on i think probably kieran got a lot more out of it but first because he knows the more of the uh, legends and things that are going on because i'm not british so that's that's something i cannot avoid um but I, I just found it uh, very whimsical and just uh, very enjoyable to read. So um, I agree, that one is a good one. Then the next one is The Book of Mother by Violin Hosman, which was also in the International Booker uh, last year. And I DNF this one. Um, I read, it's divided in three parts and I read the first part and I, I just, I was so over it. Um, it's about uh, the relationship between a mother and a daughter and how it's a, it's a very flawed relationship and the mother has a lot of issues and it's told from the perspective of the daughter um, and it just went back and forth a lot and it was very tedious and I, th I remember uh, Kieran saying that he also found the first part quite tedious but then the second and the third part were much better and a lot of people said that I just didn't <laughs> I just didn't care I just didn't I didn't care about the last part because the first part was so boring. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we didn't agree on that one. Um, and then the last one we also didn't agree on. So that one is Trust by Hernan Diaz and I have a similar, um, a similar experience with Trust. There is this, um, the point of Trust is uh, it's about this man um, I think in the 20s in New York and like the boom of of the economy and it's kind of it's divided in four parts and each part tells the story from a different perspective and at the beginning you're like oh we are just reading about this rich man um, and then by the end we kind of 
realize um, how these first two perspectives mislead us about this man. Um, and yeah, as I, as I said, like the beginning is hard to get through and then it's up to you if you think that the, uh, the revelation is worth it. And personally, I just didn't find that the revelation was that much of a reveal and I didn't feel like um, all the misogyny at the beginning was justified and the message was nothing special, like it didn't it didn't it was not groundbreaking or anything and making it through the first two parts for that i i didn't think it was worth it and i i don't think that um if a book if i have to read 200 or 300 pages of a book for it to get good it's not a good book so that's my feeling on trust i have a full review of it as well so i will link it down below um but yeah that's that's my take on it um so as you can see we do not agree in a lot of things however the next two books um that i'm going to talk about uh, i'm very excited about uh, one of them was already on my tbr before can read it so that might mean something um, and then there is a third book in this list that I'm just not gonna read uh, and that's Chino Wadachi by Shusho Shibi and this is a manga and that's basically the reason why I'm not reading it I have nothing against manga but mangas are expensive and I don't care enough to get it so I'm not gonna read it for this video just because I don't have the disposable income right now to be buying expensive mangas um, so yeah I'm sorry for that but the other two books in his list that I haven't read I am going to read because I could get them from the library um, so the first one is The, the Bone People by Carrie Holm and this one was already in my TBR and I'm not sure what this is about but I think it's about um, like indigenous people in New Zealand if I'm not mistaken and I don't know I just uh, it sounds very weird and it sounds very um, it sounds like it's going to um, be very uh, unapologetic about what it's saying and I like that so uh, I'm excited for the bone people and then the other one that he was in his list was Troubles by Jagger Farrell. Um, and this one is about the troubles in Ireland, as far as I know. Um, so, yes, these are the two books that I'm going to be reading um, in this vlog, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I will let you know how I get on with them. I think I'm going to probably start with uh, Troubles because it just seems less intimidating. They're both quite chunky, um, but Trouble sounds more straightforward. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. Um, and I'll let you know what I think about them when I read them. Hello everyone. So I have started Troubles by J. G. Farrell. Um, I'm about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through. Um, and this is not about the troubles, as I said, it's about, well, it's about in the independence of Ireland in the 1920s, basically. So they still call it the troubles, but it's different troubles from the ones in the 70s. Um, anyway, um, so this is about the fight for independence um, of Ireland and it's set in a way so it's basically focusing around this village and this hotel in the village where English people and English sympathizers stay. Um, so one of the main characters that we have here is the mayor which is an Englishman that came to um, this hotel in Ireland to look for this woman that he thought it was his fiance and he wants to marry um, and that's kind of the starting point of the the story but it's embedded within all of these other events leading to independence um, and how he's treated by different people in the town as an Englishman um, and 
it's very slow going at the beginning um, it does take a while to to start the the actual story you see like snippets here and there um, but at the beginning like the first 200 pages is mostly about this man and his relationships with the people in the town um, and there are a lot of characters because it's it's a town it's one one of those villages where like kind of everybody knows everybody and you kind of have to know everybody um, so there are a lot of characters um, but it starts to here and there put things about the revolutionaries, the independence, um, the manners of these different people, even also has stuff about the colonies abroad, so like India and and um, and Africa and all of these other countries that are also co being colonized by the English. Um, and it's slowly building up like there's more and more little of these things and i assume that by the end we will get to like the point when um when the independence actually happens maybe um but yeah so far it has been a bit slow going and some parts i, I was just a little bit like okay i have enough about this people and their relationships and the mayor being obsessed with this woman but the woman is somewhat somewhat handicapped and so um, there are all these rumors in the town and uh, the Catholics and the Protestants and all of that um, so yeah so far it's good um, I think that this this is good i understand why kd has it in in his favorites but i don't think it's going to be my favorite just because i i prefer things that are on this spectrum of the political social things to be a little bit more focused on those things than than just having on the background but i i also understand the um the importance and the skill that it takes to have something like that on the background um so yeah i think it's a good book i'm just like i want a little bit more so we will see if i get it at the end but yeah those are my thoughts so far hello everyone so i think the last clip that you saw i was reading this and i have finished this and this so i have finished both of the books uh, but somehow the clips in between have been lost so i'm just going to wrap them up again and uh, give you my thoughts so troubles so this is centered around um, a village in 1919 in ireland um, during the independence uh, wars or troubles uh, as i call them and as i said before um, the the fight is at, at the background it does come a little bit more forward at the end because it's more of a every part of everyday life um, but not enough that I, I was um, that it compensated in my opinion for the rest of the book um, not being centered around that and I I completely understand that that is my personal preference and it's not like the book should do that but uh, yeah it is my pre personal preference and that means that I did not enjoy this as much as I was hoping for considering that I wanted that to be more of a part of the book. Um, I particularly also like there are some parts it was almost like newspaper clippings the media doesn't show like that but it is like written in that sense um, of like Indian independence and um, other fights around the world against the empire which I really enjoyed that it, it brought it into the wider perspective of where the British Empire was at that time and um, how the Irish troubles were just part of that um, and uh, also like it also focuses a lot on the religious aspect of it not in the sense of um, God but in the sense of how Catholics and Protestants didn't like each other and were kind of not allowed to be with each other and um, interact with each other so I also like that um, and I also like the the tone of the book uh, the tone is quite humorous without being trying to be funny it's more of a snarky kind of writing style <laughs> if that makes sense um, and I did enjoy that as well uh, so there are a lot of elements that I liked about the book but I just think that because the the main point background of the book was not more into the woven into the story and brought forward more um, 
I think this could have been better for me. Uh, but I do understand why Katie Book likes it. And then I also finished The Bone People by Carrie Holm. Um, and this is, uh, this is a book about three people mainly. So we have Joe, which is um, quite a, um, a lonely man, a Maori man. Um, and he, he lost his wife. Um, he is the adopting father of Simon, which is the second character. Um, and they both have a very loving but troubled relationship. Like they, um, they love each other very much, but also um, they get violent with each other a lot. Um, and Simon, basically, he's, I think, five or six years old. Um, and he was kind of swept into the, the coast next to Joe's house and he, and his wife decided to adopt him and then his wife died and so they, they, it's just the two of them. He doesn't talk, um, he has a lot of trouble um, acclimatating to people and to he doesn't accept the rules of society as you would expect. Um, so he's, you know, he's giving a lot of troubles to Joe in that sense. He doesn't always go to school, he doesn't do much in school, he doesn't like to talk to people. Well, he doesn't talk, so, <laughs> but he doesn't want to interact with people. And then the third character is Carowin, and Carowin is a, an artist, a woman that decided to give everything up. Uh, she doesn't get along with her family and so she kind of built a tower near uh, Joe's house. Um, and then she made Simon first and she treats him as a human which many people don't do because of his issues, social issues. Um, and when Joe sees that, uh, they kind of start building a relationship that at some point turns romantic but it's much deeper than that. Um, and both Kerwin and Joe are Maori but Simon does look like a European. They don't know where he comes from because he didn't speak and he was too little to say when they found him. So they don't really know where he's from, um, but uh, but yeah, he does look European. Um, so there's a lot of uh, that that aspect of uh, of New Zealand culture, like the Maori versus the European uh, settlers, things like that. Um, there is also the the ambivalence of how do you raise raise a kid. Um, that is not willing to do what you tell them so it's it's difficult and you see some of the interactions that at first you might question joe as a parent but then you see how much love he has for the kid and it's it's a lot of uh, very nuanced conversations regarding parenthood uh, regarding relationships regarding um, what the meaning of life is <laughs> in a sense it's it's quite um it does question a lot of things that we take for granted um, and I did like that a lot. I also like that there are some small sections here and there in which it's indented differently and it's kind of like the inner monologue of these different characters so we don't just get to see their actions but we also get to see their thought process behind and their emotions behind all of these things that happen and honestly i thought it was going to be harder to read because i i i heard that it was a complex novel and it is a complex novel it does explore many things um, in very deep interesting ways but it's not as complex in the writing itself it's it's not one of those books in which it, it's trying the language is trying to do something so different like stream of consciousness or like jumping back and forth all the time or none of those things are happening so you do get a pretty straightforward story although the story is very nuanced and as i said there are little sections um in which you kind of get to see the the thoughts of people like if you see these sections like are indented a little bit more those are the sections of like the thoughts of of the different characters um so yeah I, overall i thought it was really good i think it's very well constructed and i think it's very nuanced um again i don't know if this was exactly what i want from a book but i can completely appreciate and admire what the author is doing and i i really enjoyed my reading experience so yeah, what I have concluded throughout this experience is that one that uh, apparently Katie Books doesn't seem to like books with chapters, like for example Travels has two parts and there's no chapter 
in between. This one does have chapters, but the chapter is like 50, 60 pages, and that happens with a lot of the books that he has in his list. Uh, John Fosse also doesn't make separation of, of chapters and things like that. So apparently that's something that he likes, and I don't. Um, but overall, um, jokes aside, I think that um, I do admire and appreciate many of the books that he chose as his favorites and I do understand why he could be drawn to them it's just I think we do have different um, different tastes I, I can appreciate why these books are good but it, they are not my preference of good um, but yeah I think overall it was a good experience I read some books that I have been wanting to read for a while um, and I enjoy them. So this was great. Um, I have on the workings a third um, episode of these reading favorite books of my favorite booktubers kind of thing. Uh, but if you have any suggestions of anyone else that you want me to do, let me know. And until next video, 